Hey Aquarius, thanks for checking out your weekly forecast for August 16th through the 22nd. We're going to see what's happening the week ahead in this lovely deck here. And then we're going to check out some love and romance messages from this deck here because I did not have a chance to do love readings for August. I know a lot of you don't want to hear about love, so I'm going to respect that and I'm going to keep that portion separate. But we're going to connect here and see what's going on for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus okay in the week ahead if you happen to stumble upon this video outside of the dates i mentioned don't you worry you found it when you were meant to find it okay my dears let's go ahead here and see what messages are coming up for aquarius sun moon and rising so first card coming up here is the hermit Okay, major arcana card. A lot of the signs have had major arcana cards coming up first right off the bat here. So major arcana cards are going to come up when we're at a significant new chapter in our life. It's a defining moment. We may be finding ourselves at a crossroads or the, the situation that we're dealing with is directly connected to something we came here to accomplish, to master a way in which we are growing and uh, as i said a lot of the signs this week seem to be kicking it off with major arcana energy not surprising right we're just coming out of the lion's gate portal opening on the eighth and so this energy is bringing about lots and lots and lots of manifestation energy lots of growth energy and we are coming into this age of aquarius here so a lot of you might be in this energy of self-reflection of going within of figuring things out the hermit card in general is spiritual awakening and some of you might be beginning to find yourself uh you know kind of transforming into this uh teacher or spiritual uh, guru maybe uh, for some of you you may be coming into a very very heightened sense of spirituality where you're feeling ready to take what you've learned and to show or guide others to show others the way hermit card for me and i've said this in previous readings i see it come up a lot of the times when you've done significant healing you've done your healing you've done your release but you might still be feeling like what's next and the hermit card comes up because we start feeling like we want to be alone other people in situations might feel a little bit exhausting we're not depressed we're not like emo or anything like that but we feel like we need space to recharge and go within and so for me it's very much like the little caterpillar that's gone into the cocoon and is going through its transformation right i know the death card typically is associated with transformation but for me in my readings i always see the hermit card that has like a a certain element of transformation here so you're feeling like you want to be alone but it's not about healing it's about letting yourself evolve giving yourself space to grow into this uh, evolved version of yourself you know it's like to, to grow your wings so to speak when the hermit card comes up now some of you could be dealing with a virgo because we know that the hermit is astrologically associated with virgo if you have a virgo placement that area of your life might be going through some really big changes and transitions right now you may be making that area of your life a priority and you might be seeing a lot of things getting unblocked in that area of your life that is a possibility as well your next card coming up here my darlings is the two of swords now the two of swords can indicate that we're at a bit of an impasse we're not sure which road to take or we've seen the signs we've seen the writing on the wall we're just nervous we're just scared about allowing ourselves to take the steps it feels scary for us to do so and so we might be tempted to be like a little ostrich and put our head in the sand and hope it's gonna go away and get better by itself or hope that we won't have to take the steps we think we're having to take and we might start procrastinating something aquarius i feel like you're trying to 
walk on eggshells around the situation because you feel like you're wanting to keep the peace. You're like, well, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to bring it up because then it can turn into a confrontation and maybe it's not that big of a deal, so I just won't say anything. Well, for me in my readings, when the Two of Swords comes up, Spirit is basically letting us know that we've shown you the signs. We've shown you the writing on the wall. We've shown you what needs to be done. If you don't take the steps you're being guided to take, we're going to have to come in and move you along. We can't let you be a sitting duck with your eyes shut, sitting there with your arms crossed in the dark for anything to jump up on you or take advantage of the situation. We can't do that. We have to get you moving. And so for me, Two of Swords is if you don't take the steps, there's going to be some kind of a power uh, tower moment. There will be that confrontation regardless. So it's better that you can go into it prepared to where you have a little bit more control over the situation. You can navigate it a little bit better prepared for it and having an exit strategy versus having it come out of nowhere and then you're scrambling around trying to figure out how to fix it. Some people get upset when I say this. I see it in the comments all the time. They're, they're angry at the universe. They're angry at the angels. They're angry at higher power. Like, how dare you give me another tower moment? I'm sick of your tower moments. And, and I'm going to, you know, uh, fight all the angels. And I'm going to, you know, beat up God because I'm sick of tower moments. Well, we have to understand something about tower moments. Okay? Tower moments don't come in to punish us. If we're in a situation where we've chained ourselves up. And it's causing us to fall off our path. And it's causing us to lose time. Spirit is going to come in and bust us out of that tower. Out of love. So that we don't let life pass us by. Or we don't lose or miss out on the opportunities that are, that are meant for us. Right? 16, or I, I should say 15, 15. The 15th major arcana card is the devil. That's when we're stuck. We're trapped, we're scared, we're afraid, we're in bondage. 15, the 15th major arcana card is the devil, being trapped, stuck, bondage. 16th major arcana is the tower card, when we're getting busted out of that tower, we're getting busted out of that jail, we're being freed. And then 17 is the star, the happy times, the happy future, the rising above it all. So tower never comes in as a punishment. Remember that and remind yourself of that. But you're coming to a really big crossroads here. And if you don't take the steps, you're going to get pushed. And if you don't want to get pushed, you got to take the steps. So the next card here is the Strength card. There could be a Leo in the mix for some of you. Astrologically, Strength is associated with Leo. Again, if you have Leo placement, that area of your life can be going through some changes here. Now... The Strength card, again, Major Arcana card. Now we have Major Arcana cards kind of weaving through this reading, right? So this can tell me there might be some roller coaster moments for you in the week ahead and coming into the weeks ahead. But these are positive cards in terms of, uh, you know, like advancing, coming into your power, coming into your strength. For me, the Strength card a lot of the times comes up when we're having to embrace vulnerability and we're having to go into a completely new direction right we're going into uncharted territory and not only are we surprising ourselves by seeing that we can be successful we're conquering we're thriving we're making allies we're finding protectors we're finding loyal people the strength card for me sometimes also comes up with the message that like you might be somebody that loyalty is very important for you but you haven't been able to find it people haven't been supportive of you people haven't been uh haven't been uh loyal to you and you might be looking at the strength card like oh yeah sure okay thanks universe strong is all i can ever be yeah i know i'm strong thank you i'll, I'll be strong again right but in this case in this case the strength card comes up like to be loyal to ourselves, to our beliefs, to our purpose, to our higher self, to our eternal self. And what that's going to do is bring in the allies, bring in the protectors, bring in the people who are going to be loyal to us, who are going to be committed to us, who are going to have our back. It starts with us being committed to ourselves, embracing vulnerability, 
and making a promise to ourselves and sticking to that promise. That's going to help bring in people that they're going to keep their promises to us. And they're going to care what we want and what we need and what we do. And they're going to have our back. But it has to start with the relationship that we have with ourselves, with the tone we're setting on our path here. Okay, so a lot of you are manifesting uh, loyalty, commitment, success, you know, these kinds of energies. Uh, in terms of the confrontation that I talked about, because I do feel some of you are kind of walking on eggshells or trying to avoid something. Strength card tells us that you can have power over a situation. You can tame a wild or intense situation if you're able to come in with gentleness. Okay? Sometimes a kind word goes a really long way. So it's not about avoiding the situation, but rather how you're approaching the situation and how you're saying what you're saying. That whole, I don't mean to be too cliche here, but that whole adage of you're going to catch more flies with honey than you are with vinegar, right? Some sweetness is going to go a long way. So maybe you are finding yourself having to sugarcoat a little bit. Maybe you are finding yourself having to stroke somebody's ego a little bit before you bring in the criticism or before you bring in the concern. But it's going to go a very long way, right? A little bit of positive reinforcement is going to go a really long way. Um, much like children, right? Uh, you know, if, if, if you tell a children, if you tell a child uh, that they have to do something, they might rebel and stick their tongue out and run away and, you know, nah, nah, nah. But if you're like, oh my goodness, whoa, I really love the way that you put your toys away just now. That was so wonderful. You are such a great helper. Thank you. Next thing you know, they're following you around the place wanting to help you with everything, right? A little positive reinforcement goes a long way. And this is going to work with adults as well, okay? So bring in that honey, right? Bring in that honey. The next card here, my dears, is the five of wands. And five of wands can be conflicting goals. It can also be internal struggle. You might be kind of struggling with yourself. You might be having some concerns or worries here about the transitions and the crossroads that you're finding. I feel that a lot of you are finding it's time to leave a situation. It's time to leave a job uh, or a relationship or a living arrangement and you're feeling very torn about it. You're feeling bad about it. Like you're looking over your shoulder and you're feeling bad about who you're leaving behind. And so I feel this five of wands is like an internal struggle. Um, again, these major arcana cards are coming up and they're saying that you're going to have to go regardless. So you may as well you know, take the steps. As I said, two of swords can tell us that if we don't do it, there will be a tower moment and we can avoid that. If you are doing something in terms of like you're really focused on your career, advancing in your career or advancing a, 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 a business if you're self-employed, five of wands could be that you're making your mark. People are beginning to see you as a worthy opponent. People are beginning to see you as a competitor that they have to take seriously. People are noticing you. People are seeing you. People like what you have to offer. And they're, they're coming to you. Okay? So in a work situation, you might have coworkers that are noticing that you're getting positive attention or you're being asked to help out with certain assignments or you're being given extra responsibilities and they see you as a threat and so they might be picking fights with you or being passive aggressive or trying to make you doubt yourself. If you're self-employed, you might have all of a sudden these other businesses are like, what in the heck is this? Where did this business come from? You might even see them trying to kind of like copy your ideas or, 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 or do some, doing something you're doing, okay? But it's making a name for yourself, so it's positive. Even though it can indicate uh, a power struggle here, it, it's, it's a competitiveness. And, uh, you know, competition in business uh, happens. So uh, it, t take it as a compliment. Take it as a compliment. We're going to see what's coming up for you guys in terms of love and romance here. Now, guys, be sure to watch your moon sign, rising sign, Venus sign videos. Uh, some weeks those might resonate with you more than your sun sign. You may need a private reading, which I'm more than happy to do for you. I am having a sale right now, so if you want to check out the pricing, you can look in the community tab. Uh, but prices are also listed if you go to calendly.com. 
slash amethyst angel light. You can schedule a private reading with me there. So love and romance for Aquarius, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. What do we need to know? What do we have permission to know? Okay. So first card here is... Dun, 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 the high priestess so this could be pisces energy it could be taurus energy because both pisces and taurus have association with the high priestess card i know some people have argued with me about that but look it up google it read it you will find information um but typically most people are going to generate the high uh, not generate i'm sorry associate the high priestess with with uh pisces now it's a major arcana card. So anytime a major arcana cards come up, this is a significant soulmate. You know, for me in my readings, it indicates that there could be a past life connection, um, a contract. You guys agreed to meet in this lifetime for a specific reason. Okay. And the high priestess is very healing. She's very confident. She's very spiritual. And you guys did have the hermit card coming up in the beginning. So you may be seeing this theme in your love life as well. That you're, you're, you might be the more evolved one or the more advanced one spiritually. It could be roles, could be reversed here, okay? But um, there could be one person here who is more advanced spiritually and who's kind of helping bring an awakening or show the way. Now, high priestess to me can be a bit of like a caution, because we did talk about how you guys have done your healing and you're going through transformation right now. When I see the high priestess, it tells me that you're at a high level of healing. Your chakras are cleared, they're aligned, you have a lot of delicious energy flowing through your body because you're connected to higher self. You're connected to source, you're connected to universe. You're in a good place emotionally for the most part. And so you have this delicious energy flowing through your body which makes you very irresistible. All of a sudden people just can't wait to get near you, right? Uh, in all aspects of life, but especially in terms of love and romance, you're going to have a lot of people that are coming at you being very persistent. They're dying to get you into bed. There could be a strong chemistry, a strong passion, and you're like, oh my gosh, this person must be my soulmate or my twin flame because it's such an intense connection. It's such an intense rush, but you have to be cautious because high priestess can uh, attract people that haven't done their work yet and they have a void, they have an emptiness and the reason why they're pursuing you so persistently is because they want to latch off of you and fill that void by feeding off your energy. They're seeing you as source. So one of the messages we learn when the high priestess comes up is that not everybody who wants us gets to have us and persistence doesn't always equal that somebody is ready keep this in mind don't mistake persistence with oh this person's ready to commit or this person's ready for a loving relationship or wow there's such an intense chemistry here this must be the person i'm supposed to be with because what you're feeling is that person feeding off of your energy and it's giving you a bit of a rush a lot of the times that happens with high priestess the next card that's coming in here is the three of pentacles Three of Pentacles can be the need to slow things down and build a foundation. All right, this person wants to be with you, but are they ready for you? Are they going to do their work? What are the rules of this relationship? What are the expectations of this relationship? What are your long-term goals? Is this person on the same page? Do they want the same thing? There is an intense connection here. And for some of you, you're lucky enough to have someone that realizes they've been avoiding their work, that sees you as an inspiration and wants to do their healing. But we got to dial it back here and come back into the Three of Pentacles and say, okay, we may have this intense connection, we may have this intense passion, but we got to talk about this. Where is this going? What do you want? What do I want? How are we aligned with that? How are we taking steps together towards that? Okay, so building something long term here, building something uh, for the future here. Now, the next card coming up is the Nine of Swords. And Nine of Swords can indicate here uh, anxiety, fear, worries. Okay. Uh, Nine of Swords comes up to say that we have to try to avoid 
self-fulfilling prophecies. When we spend so much time worrying about what might go wrong, we end up calling that into our life. We end up manifesting it. And Nine of Swords for me a lot of the times will come up to say that somebody is having a really hard time making decisions right now because they're not getting enough rest. They're not getting enough sleep. And so the Nine of Swords comes up to say, make sure that you're doing what you can to get that rest, to get that sleep, so that you're able to make good decisions. Some of you are really worried about how people are seeing you or thinking about you or perceiving you. And you may be feeling rushed to move a relationship forward because you're like, well, they're talking and they're gossiping. They're like, you know what, Aquarius is how old now? And, they're, and they haven't settled down yet? Or, uh, you know, they want to leave this relationship. Didn't they just leave somebody before? Or, like, whatever it might be. Who cares what anybody else is thinking? They're not living your life. They're not, they're, they're not uh, you know, th their opinions aren't going to bring you fulfillment. Their opinions aren't going to pay your bills. Their opinions aren't going to keep you warm on a cold night. It doesn't matter what they think. You have to disconnect from that. Go within. Get some rest. Make the decisions that are going to be best for you. You might have fears. What if I get hurt? What if this happens? What if that happens? Ask yourself, okay, what is in my power? What are some ways I can put out some safety nets here in case these things happen? And then take it up in prayer. Give it to God. Give it to the universe. Here's the things I'm afraid about. Here's what I'm doing to try to protect myself. Give me wisdom. Give me guidance. Here's all the things I'm scared might happen. If it's in the best and highest good of all involved, please keep them from happening. But if for some reason they have to happen, thank you for guiding me through it quickly and as painlessly as possible. All right, so to be in that energy of, uh, you know, empowered energy, but also having the balance of surrender. Uh, it can be scary. You guys are afraid to move forward in this relationship because I feel you are feeling emotionally invested and that can be terrifying. But don't let yourself stay in the energy of fear and be in the energy of faith, okay? Uh, communication is key here about how you all are moving forward. What do you want? How are you aligning with it? Uh, again, you may want to check out your moon sign, your rising sign, your Venus sign. Some weeks those might resonate with you more that might bring you more like a little extra information uh if you want a private reading calendly.com slash amethyst angelite i thank you all for watching liking sharing commenting and subscribing take care my dears bye